It stings. What else does it do? It preserves and causes you to what? Thirst. Yes. So we are the salt. Everywhere you, every person you should be around always wants to drink. And I don't mean liquor and alcohol. Hello? <laughs> Hallelujah. This is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it because he gave us a, a choice. Speaking of choices, how many of you all want to choose the right thing? Man, there's a lot of things happening on in this world, isn't there? Oh, my goodness. What a battle. But what a challenge. The challenge of life is exciting. Go to Psalm 33. Psalm 33. Oh, Master, let the words that have been written, that are words of life, come to life. And as we speak these words, Lord, let us eat your words, that we may eat light and life, and that light and life may penetrate every part of our being in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. amen. Verse 8. Let's speak it together. Psalm 33, verse 8. Is everybody there? Yeah. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spoke and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. The Lord brings the counsel of the nations to nothing. He makes the plans of the people of no effect. The counsel of the Lord stands forever. The plans of his heart to all generations. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people he has chosen as his own inheritance. The Lord looks from heaven. He sees all the sons of men. From the place of his dwelling he looks on all the inhabitants of the earth. He fashions their hearts individually. He considers all their works. No king is saved by the multitude of an army. How many of y'all know that we are called to be kings and priests? Amen. No king is saved by the multitude of his army. A mighty man is not delivered by great strength. A horse is a vain hope for safety. Neither shall it deliver any by its strength. Behold, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him, on those who hope in his mercy, to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. For our heart shall rejoice in him because we have trusted in his holy name. Let your mercy, O Lord, be upon us just as we hope in you. We are called again to be kings and priests. In this arena, we must put our hope and only in him. That means as we put our hope in anything else but Christ, it is called false hope. Amen? But there is what we call vain hope. Everyone say vain hope. In fact, we just read it. It says here that the horse is a vain hope for safety. Vain hope. It is when we put ourselves first and expect our hopes to come to pass. Does everybody grab hold of that? When you put yourself first and then you expect your hopes to come to pass, that's called vain hope. This hope or this vain hope, it's vain hope because it involves something called conceit, arrogance, pride, self-loving, it's egotistical. It's narcissistic. Does everybody, does everybody understand? Because this is what vanity is all about. It's vain hope. It puts a person above others or better than others. And they expect God to move on their behalf. When they themselves are out of divine order. 
It's considered self-righteousness. It holds a place of false humility. Vain hope will bring about choices of regret. Vain hope brings about choices of regret. Is everybody okay? Vain hope. There's a few things I want to share about vain hope before we go any further. Vain hope connect, disconnects us to God's timing. Has everybody got that? It disconnects us to God's timing. It disconnects us from his divine order and priorities. It disconnects us from true purpose and destiny. It disconnects us to true reality and brings a false reality in our life. Vain hope positions us to fight for the wrong things. Vain hope weakens our stance against evil and sin. And finally, vain hope will lead us right into captivity. Vain hope. In Ephesians chapter 6, it's when you put yourself first and expect and hope or expect God to do things on your behalf because you're hoping for things to happen that you're asking God to do, but yet you're still putting yourself first. Amen. That's called vain hope. It's also called, and there's an area where it will fall into false hope, but then you start hoping on other things that are truly not, God has no intentions of doing. In Ephesians chapter 6, In verse 10, remember, it weakens our stance against evil and sin. So a person will become complacent and compromised. They'll become inconsistent. They'll become dull and not alert anymore. They'll begin to drift and not even know they're drifting back into the comfort of the world. Losing that sensitivity of the comfort of the Spirit of God. In verse 10 it says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. Verse 11, let's speak it. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil or trickery of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Wow. It says, be strong in the Lord. In other words, be, to be strong in the Lord, you must be connected. You must be close. You must be stirred up. You must be alert. You must be consistent. I'll repeat it. I got looks at me like, whoa. To be strong in the Lord, you must be connected. What are you connected to? His presence. His presence. Listen, you may know the word and not know the presence. There's a difference. Because the word must be anointed by the presence. If it's not anointed by the presence, it's nothing but seed. And it's supposed to be the sword. Amen? Amen? 
To be strong in the Lord is to be connected. To be close. Stirred up. You know, it's your responsibility to stir yourself up every day. To be alert. To be consistent. And finally, to be ready. We are to be filled with the Holy Spirit constantly. Always ask and fill me with your presence. Fill me, fill me, fill me. You must acknowledge to him, Lord, I am nothing without you. I can do nothing without your presence. Let's go to Deuteronomy just in case. De Deuteronomy. Verse 1, then Moses went and spoke to the wor these words to all Israel, and he said to them, I am 120 years old today. I can no longer go out and come in. Also, the Lord has said to me, you shall not cross over this Jordan. The Lord your God himself crosses over before you. He will destroy these nations from before you, and you shall deep dispossess them. Joshua himself crossed over before you, just as the Lord has said. And the Lord will do to them as he did to Shahan and Og, the kings of the Amorites, in their lands when he destroyed them. Now, you got to remember, these were giants. Amen? These were giants. Then the Lord will give them over to you that you may do to them according to every commandment which I have commanded you. Be strong and of good courage and do not fear nor be afraid of them. For the Lord your God, he is the one who goes with you. He will, what? Not leave you nor forsake you. Then Moses called Joshua and said to him in the sight of all Israel, Be strong and of good courage, for you must go with this people to the land which the Lord has sworn to their fathers to give them and you and shall cause them to inherit it. And the Lord, he is the one who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Do not fear nor be what? Dismayed. Now here it is. Moses led the people out of bondage who were in bondage in Egypt. Amen? They, and, and even Moses was bonded in Egypt for a period of time. Now, Egypt ruled. Now, Egypt was also ruled under Nephilims. That was the Nephilim race. That's what Pharaoh was. He was of the Nephilim race, the seed of the serpent race. So, you see, Moses was, now Moses was a part of them too, wasn't he? But he wasn't born of them. He was born with them. Amen? Just like you and I. We were born again to the Spirit. We were born in here, but we now we are born of the Spirit. We are now connected to the eternal realm, no longer to the temporary realm. And there's a flow of life that constantly comes to me and you. And in this, we see that as Moses was taking the, and leading them out of the bondage of Egypt that was ruled under the Nephilim race, and the mission you know, was transferred to Joshua. So Moses had the mission of leading individuals out. Then it was transferred to Joshua. Now we have the same mission. Does everybody understand? We have the same mission, but it's of both things. Because Moses was leading them not only out of bondage, but out of the wilderness. Amen? So when Moses led them out of bondage, then it was transferred over to Joshua to lead them out of the wilderness. Is everybody okay? We go through the same thing. We were living in a place of bondage. Egypt is known as the house of bondage. The world is ruled by the Nephilim race. Lucifer, Satan being the number one ruler. So many people don't get that. It is ruled by the Nephilim race. And so in this, as Moses brought them out of the bondage, then Joshua brought them out of the wilderness. So you and I have been living in the bondage. And as we begin to come out of bondage, we go through the wilderness. And the wilderness is a set place for training. Why? So that you can lead others. 
Is everybody okay? Everybody does a wilderness experience. You're either going in, coming out, or you're in. <laughs> Hallelujah. So we have the same mission now it's of both things. So we want to bring people out of bondage and help people get led out of the wilderness. What? Well, the bondage is associated with those who are lost, and the wilderness is associated to those who are believers. Amen? They are saved, but many of them are not following. So they actually, they are saved, but they are not following. Why? Because it's a vain hope that they follow. In some areas, it's a false hope. But maintaining and knowing that God is saying to you and I, be strong and of good courage and don't fear nor be dismayed for he is with us no matter what. So we must avoid this vain hope. And the enemy loves to plant seeds of vain hope. Amen. So that you put your hopes of yourself first instead of pertaining to the kingdom. Anything that is involved with you that you put first is called idolatry. That's why Jesus gave us the formula to come out of all of this. Deny yourself. Pick up the cross and fight. Then you can follow. But it's important that we maintain connection. Because maintaining connection is called faith. That is called faith. Without connection, there is no faith. Without faith, there is no connection. Yeah. Amen? Romans chapter 5. Vain hope. People that walk by these accursed wishing wells and they throw a coin in there. It's called vain hope. <laughs> People that read their horoscopes, it's called vain hope. And it also brings a curse on them anyways. <laughs> Hallelujah. Romans 5, verse 1. Let's speak it. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have access by what? Faith. faith into this grace, which means into his plan, in which we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Now, you've got to understand something about the glory of God. This hope is the manifestation of his presence. That is the glory. It is the man's manifestation of his presence. So if when we have true hope, our hope is in him manifesting. Amen. Verse 3. Not, and not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces Perseverance and perseverance, character and character, hope. Now, hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. For when we were still without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet perhaps for a good man someone would even dare to die. <laughs> But God demonstrates his own love towards us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than, and having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath through him. How many of you know that when we're unsaved, we're under the wrath of God and nobody escapes it? For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more, having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. That means we live in his life now. Somebody got that? And not only that, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received the reconciliation. We rejoice in the manifestation of the presence of, called, of God called glory. This hope is connected to the future by faith in the present now, faith is associated with present time. Hope is associated with faith in the future. Amen. Go to Colossians 1.
It is a trap of the enemy. Amen. And too many people fall into it, especially after a trial or tribulation or a testing. They begin to, the enemy comes and shows up and starts planting vain hope seeds and it misdirects individuals. Colossians 1.19 Everybody there? Let's speak it together. For it pleased the Father that in him all the fullness should dwell, and by him to reconcile all things to himself, by him whether things on earth or things in heaven, having made peace through the blood of his, of his cross. And you who once were alienated and enemies in your mind by the wicked works, yet now he has reconciled. In the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and blameless and above reproach in his sight. If indeed you what? Continue in the faith. If you continue in the faith, will you maintain connection? Amen. Yes. Grounded and steadfast and are not moved away from the what? Hope of the gospel, which is the message of truth which you heard, which was preached through every creature under heaven, of which I, Paul, became a minister. Now I rejoice in my sufferings for you and fill up in my flesh what is lacking in the afflictions of Christ for the sake of his body, which is the church, of which I became a minister according to the stewardship from God, which was given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. The mystery which has been hidden from ages and from generations, but now has been revealed to his saints. Again, we are connected by faith, grounded steadfast and not moved in the present. Faith is about future. The future from the promises. We are steadfast. We are held. We are strong in the power of the Lord. In the hope of of the promises, of the message of the truth, and not by vain hope, but by true, pure hope. Amen? And 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Vain hope will also connect you to the future, disconnect you. It disconnects you to the future. And we're to be living from the future to the present. We don't live from the past to the present. 1 Corinthians 9.9 9. Oh, happy day. Let's speak it. For it is written in the law of Moses, you shall not muzzle an ox while it treads out the grain. Is it ox... God is con concerned about, or does he say it altogether for our sakes? For our sakes, no doubt, this is written, that he who plows should plow in what? Hope. And he who threshes in hope should be partakers of his hope. I'll explain this in a second. If we have sown spiritual things, for you, it is a great thing if we reap your material things. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, if what? If others are partakers of this right over you, are we not even more? Nevertheless, we have not used this right, but endure all things lest we hinder the gospel of Christ. Do you not know that those who minister the holy things eat of the things of the temple? And those who serve at the altar partake of the offerings of the altar. Even so, the Lord has commanded that those who preach the gospel should live from the gospel. But I have used none of these things, nor have I written these things, that it should be done so to me. For it would be better for me to die than to anyone should have make my boasting void. For if I preach the gospel, I have nothing to boast, for necessity is laid up upon me. Yes, woe is me if I do not preach the gospel. For if I do this willingly, I have a reward. But if, I, I, if against my will, I what? 
I have, but if, against my will, I have been entrusted with stewardship. Now, there's something important that I want to share here. Because we are connected in this arena by faith through Christ. Now, as we begin to sow, and how do you get connected? We sow. We praise. We worship. If you notice, the presence comes and you get touched. Why? Because you touch God's heart. He touches yours. So we continue to sow as you get connected. It begins, faith is now making that connection. And so by sowing, you are connecting. Faith is increasing. And so is your hope. So what happens now is in this hope, you become a partaker of your own hope. Does everybody get this? In other words, by having this hope, you are rewarded. God answers prayer. Remember, hope is faith in the future. So what the enemy loves to do is disconnect us. Brings vain hope, false hope. Certain things that disconnect us in any way whatsoever. When you come into service, you should have hope Amen. that God is going to do something. And, and even if you don't sense anything, because you can't have hope in your feelings, those will lie to you every time. But you can sense certain things. And if you maintain that hope and are connected through faith... God will reward you of that hope by answering prayer or something manifesting in the future. So you will partake of your own hope. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. But you will also partake of vain hope, which disconnects, what causes problems. Is everybody okay? So we become partakers of your own hope by hope and sowing. Because there's the law of sowing and reaping, isn't there? So one of the things we want to constantly do is avoid vain hope by constantly laboring unto the Lord. Everything we do. That's why David said, I always set the Lord before me. Amen? Psalm 127. Is everybody okay? Are you getting this? Enemy. It is a trap. Vain hope. Verse 1 and 2, Psalm 127. Unless the Lord builds a house, they labor what? In vain who build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. That's powerful. It is vain for you to rise up early and to sit up late to eat the bread of sorrows, for so he gives his beloved sleep. Unless the Lord builds a house, we do labor in vain hope. Amen? Vain hope. Anything that is not unto the Lord is called vain hope. Vain hope produces nothing. Does everybody get it? Vain hope produces nothing. As for anything good, it produces everything bad. Amen? 2 Corinthians 10. You know, people get really disappointed because hope is associated with expectation. And when that expectation is not met, they get disappointed and the enemy attacks them on that. Then they get discouraged. How come God didn't do this for me? Because you had vain hope. Why? Because one of the things about vain hope, it moves individuals out of God's timing. Second Corinthians 10. Verse 
verse 12. 2 Corinthians 10, 12. Let's speak it. For we dare not class ourselves or compare ourselves with those who commend themselves. Why? Because they live in vain hope, don't they? But they, measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves, are not wise. We, however, will not boast beyond measure, but within the limits of the sphere which God appointed us, a sphere which especially includes you. For we are not, what? Overextending ourselves as though our authority did not extend to you, for it was you that we came with the gospel of Christ, not boasting of things beyond measure, that is, in other man's labors, but having hope, that as your faith increased, we shall be greatly enlarged by you in our sphere. To preach the gospel in regions beyond you and not boast in an, another man's sphere of accomplishment. So this hope, the hope, the faith of the presence will increase and increase the hope of faith in a future called hope. Amen. It is a, it's called hope because we must position ourselves in the word and in, in, in his presence so that the place of faith begins to reign. Amen. Everyone say, faith must reign in my life. When faith reigns in your life, that means your connection is more important than anything in the world. That's it. If you're not connected, you're disconnected. And we can do nothing when we're disconnected. Faith must reign. And when faith reigns in your life, hope will reign in the future. Amen? Philippians 1. Vain hope. A trap from the enemy. You know, remember that these are not just Bible studies. These are training sessions. This is a military operation, not some kind of religious garbage. Amen? Jesus is the commander-in-chief of the army. We've got to come out of that mindset. And the enemy always tries to bring you back into that mindset of this religious state of being. It's not a religious thing. It's a righteous and justice thing. Amen? We are called to receive, believe, and execute. Philippians chapter 1 and verse 19. Everybody there? Let's speak it. For I know that this will turn out for my deliverance through your prayers and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. According to my earnest expectation and hope. Do you see how they go together? Because where there's hope, there's expectation. That in nothing I shall be ashamed, but with all boldness. As always, so now also Christ will be magnified in my body, whether by life or by my death. For to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. But if I live on the, in the flesh, this will mean fruit for my labor. Yet I shall choose, I cannot tell. For I am hard pressed between the two, having a desire to depart and be with Christ, which is far better. Nevertheless, to remain in the flesh is more needful for you. And being confident of this, I know that I shall remain and continue with you all by your progress and joy of faith, that your rejoicing for me may be more abundant in Jesus Christ by my coming to you again. Again, there, where there's expectation, there's hope. And where there's hope, there's expectation. It's according to his will and timing. Anything other than that is in vain hope. In other words, so your hope, you know God is going to bring something because it's a part of his promises and covenant. 
But vain hope will tell God when he needs to bring it. Amen. How he needs to bring it. When he needs to bring it. Amen. Amen. Where he needs to bring it. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. So expectation and hope <laughs> is according to his will and timing. Anything other than that is vain. And what happens in vain hope will always produce vain expectations. Yeah. Does everybody get that? Well, you're a, vain, a vain expectation is a higher expectation in this arena that has nothing to do with God. Amen. It has to do with self. Me. And when there's high expectation, there's tremendous downfalls. First Peter chapter 1. So do you want to avoid high expectations? Yes. If they're in vain, you betcha. First Peter chapter 1. In verse 3. Let's speak it. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a what? A living hope. A living, everyone say, I have a living hope. I, it's my responsibility to keep it alive. Again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith for the salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials, that the genuineness of your faith, being much more precious than gold and that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to the praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen you love, though now you did not see him, yet believing you rejoice with joy inexpressibly and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your soul. So if there's a God is testing the genuineness of your faith, is he testing the genuineness of your hope? Yes. Always. Because faith is, hope is future faith, isn't it? Of this salvation, the prophets have inquired and searched carefully who prophesied the grace that would come to you, searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ who was in them was in indicating when he testified beforehand the suffering of Christ and the glories that would follow. To them it was revealed not to themselves but to us, they were ministering the things which now have been reported to you. Through those you have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven, things which angels desire to look into. Therefore do what? Gird up the loins of your mind. Be sober. Rest your hope fully upon the grace. Now the word grace here means plan. Rest your hope fully on the plan of God to what? Bring escape to you. Amen? That is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ as obedient children, not conforming yourselves to the former lusts as in your ignorance, but as he who called you is faithful, you also be, or you who called you is holy, you also be holy in all of your conduct. Because it is written, be holy for he, for I am holy. Keeping our hope alive by maintaining connection to his presence and word by faith. But vain hope will destroy the life of hope. Does everybody get it? Vain hope destroys the life of true hope. That is in Christ. We must rest our hope upon the plan of God, no matter what's going on. That's why it's good to say God's got a plan. When things are happening, I mean, God's got a plan. God's got a plan. I don't need to figure it out. God's got a plan. Amen? Hebrews 6. And then one more scripture. And the training session is complete. <laughs> he
Hebrews 6, verse 9. Hebrew. How many Hebrew today? Praise God. Did she brew or Hebrew? Good to the last drop, huh? <laughs> In verse 9, Hebrews 6, 9. Let's speak it. But, beloved, we are confident of better things concerning you. Yes, things that accompany salvation, though we speak in this matter. For God is not unjust to forget your work and labor of love which you have shown toward his name, and that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. And we desire that each one of you show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope until the what? Until the end that you do not become sluggish and imitate those who through faith and patience inherit a promise. For when God made a promise to Abraham because he could swear by no one greater, he swore by himself, saying, Surely I will blessing I will bless you, and multiplying I will multiply you. And so after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. After he impatiently endured, he obtained the promise. For men indeed swear by the greater, and the oath of confirmation is for them in an end of all dispute. Thus God, determining to show more abundantly to the heirs of the promise, the immunity, whatever, <laughs> a lot, <laughs> of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath, <laughs> that by two... Uh, lots. <laughs> Immutable things in which it is impossible for God to lie. We might have strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold of hope set before us. So God is always placing true hope before me and you all the time. As soon as you make connection through faith, hope is there. Does everybody get it? Hope is there. It's tangible for me and you. Why? Because it's like, whoa, he's going to do this in the future. And I know it. But I'm not going to, I know it's his time, his will, his plan, and I ain't got to mess with it. Does everybody get it? Man, you start putting your fingers in hope, it gets contaminated. Glory. Full assurance of hope in Christ until the end, but keeping it active, not, not falling short in vain hope. The hope of him, he has set before me and you every single day. It is an anchor to our soul. Yes. Somebody get it? It's an anchor to our soul by faith connected to his presence, his promises, his word, and his blood of covenant. Oh, praise God. Let's go to Ephesians 1 and we'll close here. Vain hope is a trap of the enemy. You know, vain hope usually puts a person in position where they start interfering with God. They try to fix it instead of letting God fix it. Amen? I'm not going to ask if anybody's ever done it because we'll all be lifting our hands and feet. <laughs> Ephesians 1 verse 15 <laughs> let's speak it therefore I also after I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints do not cease to give thanks for you making mention of you in my prayers that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ the Father of glory may give you Give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened and that you may know what is the hope of his calling for you. What are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the working of his mighty power. 
which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that age which is to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body, everyone say, which is me, the fullness of him who fills all in all. False hope, vain hope. Be careful that you don't put your hope in things that cause harm. Because they will cause harm. Amen? Remember, you will reap your own hope. <laughs> you will reward your own hope from your own hope. As long as it's in line with God. So you and I must constantly align ourselves with the Word of God, the timing of God, and be connected to the presence of God. That's why he says, forsake not to assemble. Because it's training. Amen? We get, we get stirred up. We get encouraged. We get refreshed. So we can kick more butt. Remember, this is a military operation. Not some, some soulish move. It's military. But you got to be able to connect. And if you don't open your mouth and sing, you can't connect. You may think you are. That's false hope. It's vain hope. It's thinking vain if you think you're going to make connection with God if you ain't sowing. It's vain. Somebody get it? Amen? So you got to open your mouth. You might have to do a little shuffle. <laughs> Don't worry about your neighbor. Put your, give your neighbor to the hands of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. Let the seed of true, true hope be manifested in each and every one of us. The message that you've released into this atmosphere and into our spirits, Lord, let it be protected by the blood. Let it come to remembrance, Lord, as the enemy tries to trap us in vain hope that we would overcome because our hope truly is in you. Our rest is in you as we wait upon you and give you the glory in Jesus' name.